Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Okay, this is a special episode. I know I say this often, but sometimes it really is. This is going to be an insight video dedicated to DSD. Yes, I know, as I always say, every once in a while I take a peek, a sneak peek in the digital domain. I mean, we can't talk only about analog since Analog and digital are two parts of the same concept, of our same passion. What is that? Hi-fi listening music. So, let's get to it and see what the fuss is all about. Okay guys, so I decided to do a video on DSD finally because there's a lot to say. Uh, as you've seen from the title, there are positive effects, aspects and negative aspects, plus a lot of information and misinformation going around this type of format. So we're going to take a look at the format, then we're going to take a look at the good, the positive aspects the bad, the evil, the negative aspects, and then we're also going to do a test, a special test. Are you ready? Let's start right after this. I have my notes here. There's a lot to say. Let's start with the format. So, what is DSD? Direct Stream Digital, or as it should be correctly named, the, the, the true name is 1-Bit Delta Sigma Audio Modulation. Why is this? Because the huge difference between DST, this format, and PCM, pulse code modulation, all the rest of the types of audio you know, wave files, FLAC, AA, uh, CAAF, uh, MP3s, that's compression of uh, PCM, etc., etc. All the different types of files, of formats, um, you know, are you are connected to PCM. Instead, DSD is a whole new type of encoding, which is a new format, actually. And the main characteristic is that it has only one bit, positive or negative, in contrast with the multi-bit format of PCM, which goes, as we know, from uh, four, five, all the way up to 32 and, and even more if you want. But normally, usually, as we all know, the CD is 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate with 60, 16 bits. So, what is exactly DSD? DSD is a format that was invented by Sony and Philips and released in 1999. They used it mainly for archiving their analog masters. But then, all of a sudden, they decided that it was ready for uh, the consumer market. Hence, they decided to create what we all commonly know, the SACD, the Super Audio CD, which unfortunately was a failure, at least in terms of mass consumption. Uh, Super Audio CDs are still produced today, but it's a very niche, a small niche, a very small market where audiophiles go every once in a while to pick. But... Now with streaming, now with online services, Super Audio CD, as we will see, does not make that much sense anymore. In any case, one step at a time. Let's take a look uh, at the different standards regarding DSD. We could all already, in fact, de define it as an obsolete media. No, Sony is not supporting it anymore, as well as other companies. Nevertheless, small labels are still using it in order to make Super Audio CDs. In any case, the main DSD standards are DFF, which belongs to Philips, was issued in 2000, WSD, which was the one-bit audio consortium, uh, and it's mainly dedicated to the Japanese market, and maybe the one we all know a little more is DSF, which was released by Sony in 2005. We have different ty types of, we could say, sampling resolution of DSD. The standard, the, the, the starting point was DSD 64, which is the basic file inside, we could say, the Super Audio CD, the SACD, 
Why 64? Because it's 60 times, 64 times the resolution, the sampling frequency actually, of the CD. That's going to be the standard for all the, di the different kinds of up samplings. DST may be found, as I said, 64, but also 128, but also 256, but also 512, and recently also 1024, but, but it's very rare. I mean, the, the market, the small market, is mainly focused on 64, but I would say mainly now 128 and 256. Just to give you an idea, though, of what we're talking about, uh, if we think that a CD, as we said, had 44.1 kilohertz, that means 44,100 44, samples per second of a specific audio signal. Thousands. With DSD, we passed in the sphere of millions. Just already with DSD 128, we have 5.6 millions. We're talking about megahertz sampling. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's difficult to think. Millions, not thousands. If we go all the way up for something that is truly found, DSD 512, that's 22.6 million samples for one second. And that is why we can do a one-bit conversion, a one-bit resolution, because we have so many samples that can actually define also the dynamic range, as we will see, with one trick connected to noise shaping. We'll take a look after, afterwards to that. Just to give you a rough idea, they claim, we say, we think that more or less, it's difficult to compare to PCM, but DST 64, the Super Audio CD, is roughly, it has its equivalent as 24 bits, 96 kilohertz. DSD-124 is instead more or less 24 bits, 100, 192 kilohertz. And instead, DSD-256 more or less is 24 bits, 352 kilohertz. Okay? Just to give you an idea. So these are roughly the files that we're finding. But we don't find only, actually, it's very rare to find pure, real, native DSD files, which, as I said, it's DFF and DSF mainly. Otherwise, we're going to find also, for example, DXD. We're, we're, you, can, you can hear that acronym a lot of times going around. Like, for example, a lot of people are enthusiastic of the 2L Nordic recordings, Good recordings, absolutely, but that's not native DSD. DXD actually is PCM. It's a 24-bit, 352.8 kilohertz uh, sampling rate resolution, which is also then com convert converted to DSD. A lot of people think that upsampling, changing the format more than upsampling to DSD, make somehow the signal better. I don't think that that much, at least. I don't... My experience, I prefer to remain native in which format the um, the sound, the other uh, signal, the album, the music was recorded. Plus, another acronym maybe you have heard around in these years is DOP, which means DSD over PCM. Now, this is something different. This is a transport solution. It's not a file because it's still DSD but it is encapsulated in a PCM format. Why is this? Well, mainly for two reasons. First of all, uh, USB power, um, USB cables have a problem with native DSD. They don't recognize it. So you have to send it through a PCM envelope. That's why we're using DOP, which was invented by DSC, a very famous hi-fi house in 2000. 11, I think. And um, there, uh, the characteristic also that, that is good about this solution is that DSD remains absolutely native. It's just a, a way of, a means of transport, okay? It remains the same, but it has to pass between that cable. Plus, another reason why is that unfortunately with Linux, uh, Linux, as we say in Italy, or um, uh, Mac computers, OS X, 
we have some problems because we don't have we I have a Mac computer we don't have the correct driver we don't have the a ASIO the ASIO ACO uh, driver which is instead present in uh, in the Windows operating system without that type of driver unfortunately we have to go with DOP for example a lot of people I'm sure are using Audirvana they have to use that solution on Macs because unfortunately you cannot send a native DSD signal but no problem it's still DSD it's still native it's going to get on the other side in your DAC in the correct way so no problem with that instead DXD it's something else it's actually it's PCN okay so let's start taking a look now at our second huge container concerning the good the positive aspects okay so the first interesting and positive aspect of DSD is noise shaping a lot of people in fact called it the art of the beauty of noise shaping because actually that is the trick the core behind DSD why because DSD with its only one bit quantization uh, one bit resolution what is quantization is the the number of bits the, the certain amount of resolution of bits that's that's what it is to define a specific signal because you have to define that signal somehow so with a CD you have 16 bits with a DST you only have one when you have only one that quantization one bit quantization makes a lot of prop makes a lot of problems makes a lot of noise of distortion Be because how it is it's only negative or positive and that leaves a lot of noise so with noise shaping and dithering that is the adding of a white no a white noise signal in order to somehow uh, make the sound better not so isolated all the different samples it makes it a, a little more uh, combined all the single parts we could say because it adds a continuous noise on the bottom but it also helps this noise shaping solution the uh, algorithms that they insert that they apply during recording obviously and during playback in your deck that's why it's important to have a good deck capable of dealing with this type of algorithms they are able to all this darn noise in the ultrasonic frequencies way above what we can hear parenthesis as you know I strictly and firmly believe in what we can hear that we that the audio beyond the tw the, the the famous threshold of 20 22 kilohertz which is the audible threshold it is true but what comes after does have an influence on our perception on our hearing in many ways I'm not gonna go in this I made a dedicated video in depth with scientific peer review articles so take a look at that if you're interested here's a link okay so noise shaping as we said is strictly connected to another concept dynamic range yes because it's thank it is thanks to the noise shaping algorithms that we're pushing ahead the noise up above almost as a compander uh, but at the same time we're dramatically increasing the dynamic range otherwise a normal DSD with this darn noise would be like a DSD 64 would be only 36 dB instead DSD goes much higher goes 120 so it, it has a lot of dynamic range but unfortunately it is not as good we could say as PCM because uh, thanks to noise shaping we do have that good dynamic range but at the same time uh, in this case this is the negative part of noise shaping when we reach the signals around 20 kilohertz unfortunately the dynamic range starts to decrease and at the same time the noise starts to go up so the different DACs the digital to analog converters need to start to cut off this this noise and obviously they're going to cut off also some of these higher frequencies filter not cut off they're, they're more like well actually yeah there is some cutting off sometimes in most cases let's call it filtering it's a little more uh, more nuanced more subtle so 
Unfortunately, that's what happened. And that is why, though, it is better to go with a higher upsampling, like DSD-128, DSD-256, because the noise shaping does not have to work so much, is not that present, because the noise isn't that much at that point and is pushed even upper above the threshold of 25 uh, kilohertz and, and, and so on. It's, so at that point, uh, the noise shaping is not set so harsh so it's much more pleasant, the, the, the music is much more pleasant, it's much more dynamic, plus the DAC does not have to work so much to, to apply that noise shaping. So, uh, in contrast with what you would think, that a higher sampling frequency would make the, 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 the DAC uh, have some issues, some problems, on one side maybe you're right, but on the other side, no, because it's much more easy to handle. Instead, the, the super audio CDs, there's a lot of algorithm and filters and dithering going on in order to, to keep the, 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 the right levels, to, to keep the right dynamic range, the, the right amount of noise out of the way, etc. I mean, it's very complex. That's why I have these notes. And this is more or less the, the main aspects regarding the beauty of noise shaping. Unfortunately, as I always say, I think it's a harsh manipulation of the signal. And it does leave some traces. Some does leave some traces, I think. Okay, now, we can pass to our third part, our third huge block, the evil, the negative aspects. And what we should do uh, towards these negative aspects. What, what are the possible solutions and our approach? Okay, what is the problem here? The problem is, this is the main focus, I would say, of the negative part of this video, is that almost all the recordings, almost all the Super Audio CDs you have, you're buying, you're downloading, and you're streaming, are unfortunately been converted from PCM. Why is this? Because it's more easy to work with a PCM file. With DST, you practically cannot, well, you can, but it's very difficult to master, to edit, to mix. There's only a bunch of softwares available on the market now. One of the most famous is Pyramix, the, the, the software by Pyramix, called Pyramix, which is able to handle a DSD file and it's very complicated. So most people when they're doing reissues, when they're doing new records, they do it in PCM. Maybe they record it in DSD, but then they're gonna convert it in PCM and then again they're gonna bring it back to DSD. And when you do that, unfortunately, you're losing the benefits of what is a native DSD signal. Uh, some people think that this conversion actually helps. So it's not that uh, focused issue, unfortunately. I do not think this. I think that it's important to strict with what the signal the music was recorded with, a type of format. PCM, go to PCM. DSD, go to DSD. Uh, the, the big promise of DSD was it's very simple. They're just three passages. Here you can see some images how um, how it, it was supposed to be, and instead it is. I mean, there's lots of passages also in DSD. So let's not think it's just so analog-like, very simple, very nice. No, there's a lot of uh, a lot of technology behind that and a lot of issues, but we are finally achieving a mature stage, I would say, of DSD. And it is good if we are recording, listening, and reproducing it in its native format, DSD. But unfortunately, we're not having that. I wanna remark this. All, all your Super Audio CDs are probably been uh, handled in a five-bit PCM mastering or, or editing, just simple editing of the, of the signal. Fortunately, there also is a lot of conversions, simple conversions. Just take the analog tapes and convert them to DSD without touching anything. Some people do that, and fortunately, the, the results are excellent. 
Why? Because you already had a mastering process for that analog format. So you, you don't need, fortunately, to re-elaborate. Well, obviously, there are going to be some problems, but who cares? Audio files and I would say just music enthusiasts, people who want good music and hate the loudness war, will finally focus on this. So already a nice, clean, pure transfer is good. But as I was saying, we want native DST. But again, what is the downside? The downside is that we do not have enough labels, records in pure DSD. They're practi practically absent. So this is almost the forgery of DSD. Because if we only have just a few hundreds, maybe some a few thousands of recordings in pure native DSD, what is the point? Let's just do high quality PCM or Finally, let's start to record, mix, edit, master, and playback in pure DSD. That is the way to go. And there are just a few places, actually, on the internet where you can do this, because obviously there's nothing on hardware. There's no physical media where you can do this. You have to download. You have to stream. No, not stream. Download. They're too big, these files. So the main places I recommend, but they're not that many actually, it's for example, uh, nativedsd.com. They're excellent. They have very many good quality recordings coming from different labels. They also have other formats, also PCM, DXD, etc. But go for the correct native uh, albums that are with that are pure DSD, and you can you can understand that. From, uh, from the technical and specification aspects, the technical notes, where it says how that rec record was recorded. Plus, don't, don't stop there. I mean, check in which sampling rate the album was recorded. If it's 128, don't buy the even a more expensive DSD-256. Yes, they do that because they say that once take the, taken away the noise, they're gonna up sampling and he again an even better uh, frequent um, dynamic range. Maybe it can help, but you again you're again manipulating again you're transforming that poor signal. Let's just leave it how you record it. So this is at least I think it's better. That's my tip. Check my su my suggestion. Check how it was recorded. If it was DSD, if you're interested in DSD, if you're not, who cares? Turn off the video and check the type of frequency, um, sampling frequency. And buy that one, not the other ones. Um, there are also other, other sites like Channel Classics. I think they're excellent. They make their own music, their own records, plus they sell all their other, other labels. And as you can imagine, it's mainly classical music, but not only, but not only. Even small ensembles, jazz, very cool. I think they have excellent stuff, excellent material. They're not that many, guys. They're not that many. Um, another one is Blue Coast Records. Should have a few DSD if if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, pure DSD. So not that many, but I'll put the links in the video description. Obviously, I just wanted to mention a hybrid solution. Some labels are adopting, like for example. Uh, Forward Studios, which is an Italian label that's making excellent uh, music, excellent records, I think. They record and uh, master in analog, and then they transform it, they uh, convert it to DSD, which I think is a fantastic solution, because you, I understand that sometimes you need to do a little bit of retouching of the signal. So even just for, for, the, for the, the different peaks, I mean, uh, you would like to normalize, have a little more volume, a little bit without compressing. I understand that. Well, a little bit you have to compress. In any case, sometimes you have to do that. If you're starting with normal DST and you're not, you don't have a fully equipped studio, it's going to be kind of difficult. That's why a good solution, it also gives that analog touch, is to start analog and finish off DST like they do. Very cool. And they're not the only ones. So apart from all of this, these problems and the good part, I think it's important to underline that if we want to spend, if we, the labels, the houses, the websites are 
pushing us to spend so much money on something that we can't even handle in our hands that we don't know if it's going to go ahead if we're going to if it's going to break in our hard drives i know you can download it again but maybe some labels some websites we're going to close who knows i mean we're investing a lot of money and time on equipment etc so i think we should have like it's starting now for high resolution audio remember that video i did very similar title here's the link I think we need some certifications. Yes, of different passages. I want a certification for that it is a native recording in DSD somewhere. Please write it nice and clearly. Yes, some websites, as I said before, do that. But not everyone does. And especially if I buy something like a Super Audio CD, I want to know that. So a certification if it's or isn't a native DSD recording. I want a certification that the whole full chain is D &D, DSD, if that is true. So no PCM conversion. I want to know that the whole process, editing, mixing, mastering, etc., was always made in DSD. If that is good, good. It's You'll have a plus. You're going to sell better that record. So it, why not inform people? But this has to somewhat be canonized as they did for a PCM, high resolution PCM. Plus, I want to know the original sampling rate, as we said. Please tell me, what is the original sampling rate? Don't sell me the one that costs more, that has 12, 2 or 3 times that sampling rate. No need. Just tell me the original one. Plus, I want a gear that has its certification. Again, this is already happening with high-resolution PCM. The little brown, blackish, and yellow logo. We want something like that on... Uh, also our gear, portable and fixed hardware, pieces of hardware. So I want to know that darn DAC, my DAC is capable, able of dealing with a native source and doing it well, correctly. Not just a Delta Sigma conversion, multi-bit, up and down. I mean, please, we want something done correctly. And who does that? I think <clears throat> it's positive. It's uh, almost as a, a reward for people who are doing things correctly to show that, to recognize that. I think we have to do somehow this. Okay, let's pass now to our test. As you can imagine, obviously, I cannot put the files here, apart from copyright issues, but you know, that's not a problem. Sometimes you just lose monetization, but who cares? I don't care. The problem is that, obviously, I need to let you understand the differences listening also to D true native DSD files. So what did I do? First of all, I got my nice copy of Saxophone Colossus by Sonny Rollins of the Tate Project. I got the first track, the first minute, and I converted it in DSD 64, 128, and 256. Then I also did that in PCM. 88.2, 96, 192, and 352.8 kilohertz sampling rate. All, all this has been done with my RME ID2 Pro FS. Here's an image. So you can be sure that everything has been done correctly with Vinyl Studio Pro on a fully uh, enhanced MacBook Pro. So don't worry for the gear, top notch. Plus, I also wanted to do another of my uh, master tapes. This is obviously a first or second generation, never know, no. Picture of an exhibition of Mussorgsky. And I took the second track, the Gnomus, Gnomus. I'll put the, 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 the correct name here. And I just did simply 192 kilohertz for PCM and DSD 128. Very simple. So you have two sets of comparisons. You're gonna find the link in the video description here below so you can download the whole packet. It's big, but you'll have lots of files. I did this all by myself, so it's I'm sure of what's in those files. And you can do and you can have a true comparison. The optimum obviously would have been to record music with one microphone or one set of microphones for PCM and at the same time one set of microphones for DSD and have their own process. But this is something very similar because we're having one specific master tape that is 
recorded multiple times, not downsampled. No, no, no. I did one, one by one for each one in DSD and in PCM. So I'm sure 100% that all are uh, unique files and unique versions of coming from the same source in this case and this other case. I'm going to put a poll, public poll on the community tab. Okay, guys. So uh, once you're done watching this video, download the files, listen them if you have a DSD setup. I hope you do and a good DSD uh, D DAC and, and player. And at that point, once you've decided which one you like more, start voting. Plus, I'm also going to put in the download. Uh, I'll, I, after that, I'll put the results also in the video description in the future, but I'm going to wait like a month or so. Plus, I'm going to also put a down in that for download a very interesting paper where they did a uh, double blind test scientific paper, peer reviewed abstract, peer, but it's from the A A E S. So it's a very precise and scientific paper where they have done with 46 people this test with PCM and DSD. I'm not going to tell you the results because I don't want to influence you with your own test. But you can find the results. You just go all the way down to the conclusions. I highlighted the most important facts. Interesting read. Take a look at it. Okay, guys. Whoa, that was a long one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please try to listen to the tracks. Please participate to the poll. And remember, in any case, apart from all of this, music is born analog. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.